Cheers and salutations. Welcome, everybody, for a very special episode of Hard Lens Media, because in just a few days, Chicago will be in the forefront in regards towards the 2024 election cycle, as we'll be seeing Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz be, I guess, anointed as the president and vice president nominees for the Democratic Party for 2024. However, there are many issues impacting this uh key event and not to mention it's taking place here in chicago which has always been a hotbed for political corruption insider backstabbing and so much more and joining me here to talk about that as well as a few other issues impacting the city of chicago give it up for a good friend of the show he's been a commentator entrepreneur ran for office for chicago mayor give it up for jamal green jamal so good to see you again after uh, so long your mic is on mute i believe though you are right about that. <laughs> so good to see you again. I hope you are doing good well. to see you. Um, doing but well, uh, man. It's, it's it's election season, so you know you know how we're all doing. <laughs> ready for well, it all to be over. Well, I th I think not only are we ready for it all to be over, but I think first and yeah. foremost we are about to see uh, Chicago once again uh, become a, a hotbed of well, I guess political infighting, intrigue. And, well, yeah. just a lot of uh, cringe along the way as well. So uh, recently, you know, you did a fantastic video calling out both parties. And I think it's only fair yeah. that we do play this up here. And it's regards towards what's happening to the uh, black communities, especially here in Chicago. Because what I've been saying to my audience is that for the first time in a long time, we are actually seeing, especially in the black communities on the southwest side neighborhoods of Chicago, a pushback against a democratic machine, which is something yeah. I never thought I would see. I think we've all uh, been, you know, very shocked at the yeah. at, at the pushback. So uh, I do I do want to give you a For chance sure. to at least, you know, uh, speak about some of these issues. But I want to play this video here that has actually yeah. been gaining a lot of traction. So if you don't mind, it's, you're, you're both calling out both Trump and Kamala here. So let's go ahead and play this video. The hate that I'm seeing from black people to each other over who's better between Kamala and Donald on the internet, it gets on my nerves. Because the reality of the situation is, while we spending so much time being divided and hating each other, that's the reason why we're in this position in the first place. Neither party gives a damn about black people. We just gotta be honest. We don't have cultural foundation because they stole it from us many years ago. Our neighborhoods have, are structurally sound. We're not building strong families. We're not rebuilding Black Wall Street as we need to so that we can fund our own politicians. So miss me with one party is better than the other. We got to have independence and economic prosperity so that we can create the power for our communities. Kamala and Donald is not going to save you. We have to save us. And it's us hating each other of why we're here today. We don't support each other, whether in life or in death. That's why we don't have a large black owned bank. That's why even in death, the largest funeral home in Chicago uses white owned crematories for all of their services. We don't support each other in no industry. And that has to change. Let's bring unity to our communities and rebuild them so that we can have a better future for our children. Well, that was on point. Ooh, so, you know, I, I think there's powerful. a lot of people. Not, not, not only is it powerful, <laughs> but I, I think it just resonates to the point of, you know, people are getting tired of the two-party system. And even I, yeah. myself, am getting I guess maybe this is becoming a burden. Just I'm trying to convince a lot of people. Both parties don't care about you. So I want to give the floor yeah. uh, to you in regards towards your messaging in regards to to this election cycle, what it means for uh, all of us as a whole, and what this could potentially do for us further on down the road. So you've been yeah. you've been raising the alarm about the failure of both parties and everything. So I want to give the floor to you, my friend. Well, uh, I, th I think, you know, uh, the reality of the situation is, is we got to wake up and we got to understand that both of these parties have been in bed with each other for many years. And the folks who actually run this country, um, you know, is the military industrial complex. There are powers that be that are making decisions far above us. And the reality is, is I hate when we get into these election seasons and we're all capping for either candidate or either party like it's going to make a huge, huge difference on our lives, especially with my people. Right. Black people as for many decades now have been very beholden to the Democratic Party. 
And, um, you know, unfortunately, we have yielded no results um, since, you know, we've been a part of the Democratic Party. But the Democratic Party cannot win without the majority of our support. And yet our neighborhoods look how they look because they take our votes for granted because we don't have the economic power that the other industries have, whether that be, you know, the Jewish lobby. Look what APAC did yesterday to Cori Bush. That's why all of all of the the um, uh, uh, folks in Congress are scared of the Jewish lobby. Right. Because they will pour money to, to hurt them and they will rather get the money in their campaign donations instead. So their mm -hmm. issues will always be number one pro. They, everyone has to be pro Israel or they will take you out. Right. When right. there was the, the Asian community and they stepped up and said they were, were getting hate, they, they provided an anti-Asian hate bill. That's because they have unity and economic power. And at the end of the day, with our people from slavery on, on to this point and all the different policies that happened, we have been so broken and so damaged and pinned against each other that, um, you know, we're now in a position where we're scrapping for crumbs and we're mm -hmm. fighting each other over politicians who can give really a damn about us or either party that doesn't even have an agenda to repair the damage that they've broken or to move forward policies that matter to our people. Look at what's happening in Chicago. The migrants mm -hmm. gets billions of dollars and, 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 and over a year two, but we probably over $2 billion since we started this and ain't even been two years. Right. And the black, and they use the black buildings, 51 schools were shut down in 2013. Majority of them were predominantly black schools and all of those schools were shut down. And when the black community said it wasn't the right thing to do, they still did it. And then mm -hmm. when they said, well, look, well, since y'all did it already, give us the buildings. Let us build manufacturing hubs. Let us build uh, community centers. One that, that I've been trying to do in, in one of them. Let's do these things to repurpose these buildings that will benefit our neighborhoods. You know what they said? No. We don't have money. We don't, you know, they, they, they played all these games. Now, 10 years later, these abandoned buildings that's been sitting here, they haven't been maintenance. Y'all haven't even checked on these buildings in our neighborhoods. Now, all mm. of a sudden, we need a place for the migrants, and we're going to spend millions renovating these buildings so that they can become shelters, so they can we can have child care uh, in these buildings for the migrants. This agenda... It's a slap in a flake face to our communities, knowing that we've been asking for these buildings for our kids. You, you we, know, you, you know, it's teaching rather, our children in these buildings. You, you know, it's rather fascinating too. And and, and hearing hearing this whole idea of maintenance and rebuilding, I think we both know Chicago politics pretty well. That this quote unquote maintenance, they're only doing half measures just to make it look nice, like putting on a nice paint of Correct. coat, even yeah. you know, a nice coat of paint on the wall, even though. There's mold and a few other issues impacting that said wall, and it's not Correct. safe for people of any age to be in there. Case in point, you one of the few people. There was a couple people bringing awareness of the fact that there was a lack of safe sanitation in a lot of these migrant shelters already, which is a problem that's still ongoing. And what people yeah. don't even realize as well is that there's a lot of migrants. Even the Chicago Tribune and Sun Time was even bringing this up, and that is. Migrants are leaving. There was an infamous uh, yeah. article where uh, you had one person all the way from Venezuela saying, myself and a few of my friends, we we came here. There's nothing here for us. Uh, we're going back. So it, it, it's it, it's yeah. a weird back and forth game. But there, there's something yeah. I want to uh, get, get your commentary on. And that is, you know, we've been covering on this show about how and that sounds just black voters, Latino voters, women voters, yeah. all voters. But, you know, this has been the front issue where black voters are considering either voting for Trump. And let's face it, the George Carlin quote is right. It's one big club. You ain't in it. Both parties don't like you. Simple as that. Right. But you're seeing black voters go to flock to the Republican Party. You're seeing black voters go to third parties and independents or either that. Yeah. Choosing not to vote at all, period. At all. And, yeah. and, and this and this is a great shift that we've never seen before. And the media has been weaponizing this as a way to shame people and to sure think, has. well, if you don't support yeah. Kamala, well, then you're just supporting Trump. Or if you're going to support Trump, yeah. well, then you must hate yourself. Could you uh, elaborate yeah. more? Like what, what has been because you've been posting on social media, well, you've been doing interviews about what's happening here yeah. in Chicago and how people have been reacting to this 2024 election cycle. Well, you got to understand, we got to talk at the kitchen table. We got to talk about the issues that are hitting our doorsteps. You know, you talked about other groups of people that also have a problem with it. The Latino community has a problem with 
the migrant crisis as well. The Latino community, you know, they 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 came over here to have sanctuary. They didn't get thousands of dollars a month. They didn't get six months of, of rent in, in homes. They didn't get fed three times a day. And so a, a, a lot of them feel the same way that black people feel because, you know, those those people, uh, you know, uh, who have been here and working for dollars, right, because they can't get uh, um, uh, a decent paying job. They're working for a couple of dollars trying to make ends meet so that they can find their place in, in, in our city are now seeing the influx of migrant money go out. And they're saying, holy crap, holy cow. When I came over here, I was ducking ice and, and uh, not getting any resources, right? And so now these folks can come over here and claim asylum and get all these resources. Other communities see that too. It's just not the black community. And so, you know, at the end of the day, um, what's going on is people are seeing issues hit their doorstep. And so they're mm -hmm. tired of being, they're tired of falling for the okie doke. They're tired of hearing the same old, old Democrat. No, they don't care about parties anymore. And that's how it needs to be because I'm sick of these same two party systems, uh, the two party system in America. We need the best person for the job. And the reality is people are going to vote based off of the issues that matter most to them. They may love the fact that uh, Kamala is a woman and it's going to be history. But they know that the border crisis is hitting their home. So they're thinking twice. They're like, ah, we got to hear what Kamala's going to say about this border. How is she going to fix this? Because this is a huge issue, right? Um, you know, they want to hear I'm glad you brought issues that, up that too. they see. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because I've been playing this game with my audience. And that is, well, has Kamala updated her website? All right. Now, uh, now, well, hold no on. We're, well, we're, we're, we're going to find out now in real time. So because on yesterday's okay, show, I did a, I did a segment where I pull up Trump's RFK mm -hmm. juniors, Dr. Jill Stein, Dr. Cornell West and Chase Oliver. Each obviously okay. people, you know, they're running for president. So here is Kamala yep. Harris's uh, campaign uh, or at least first. Here's her Twitter account, just to be clear. So, I mean, I yep. don't know why she she ran with Mamala because of Drew Barrymore's cringe interview, but OK, whatever. Mamala. We click <laughs> we, we click on this link right here and we go to the, what is to be expected. First, they're asking for money. Five thousand yep. dollars to whoever's doing that. OK, but. Do you see anything with policy? No, I see nothing for policy. No policy. I see a store and hold on FAQs. Maybe we're maybe I'm wrong here. Oh, it's about where, where it's all about money. How can I donate? Is my donation secure? Oh, donation tax deductible. But yep. wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. We we got got just one more thing here. This is the store. Did they update the store? Of course they did. They put the new Waltz hats up last night. There you go. Look at that. Waltz hats. Uh there. Wow. Wow. They updated mm -hmm. that. It's still no policy. Yep. So no policy. Uh, so as someone who's covered politics, both you and I have have done this, especially here in Chicago. Does that even inspire yeah. anyone? Because what I, what I find interesting is that yet Kamala has yet to really engage with a press event. And there was supposed to be, I guess, Kamala's appearance uh, for the convention for the black journalists that were here in Chicago just a week ago, where in which Donald Trump yeah. did attend. Now, I, I have yeah. my opinions on that whole entire event altogether. But in all reality, yeah, sure. she should have been there. What are your thoughts on her lack yeah. of engagement and lack of policy? I mean, do you, do you, do you even I think does anyone yeah. have a clear idea what she's running on? No, she's definitely avoiding the questions. She definitely is avoiding the smoke, as I like to say. Kamala is avoiding the smoke. She is staying away, not answering a lot of questions from media, and she's not presenting any pop uh, any policies to be criticized. So, you know, that's their agenda for the next 90 days is run on Mamala and uh, pro-women, a feminist movement, and, um, you know, uh, 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 anti-Trump movement. See, they're benefiting from the anti-Trump movement, too. So the reality is, is let's be honest, no one cared about Kamala a couple weeks ago. People didn't like Kamala. The majority of the country didn't like her. Every poll, no poll ever said that she had an approval rating that was even 50%. So let's be serious here. She's benefiting off of the fact that people don't want Trump in office. And she's benefiting off of the fact that now they're going to try to push the pro woman movement and, and women's rights movement. And the fact that Trump, um, you know, helped to overturn Roe v. Wade with his Supreme Court justices, 
They're, she's benefiting off of that, right? So she is trying to create perception. And I, I put up a tweet yesterday that said that this race is going to be decided off perception. How are you going to make people feel about this race unless people wake up and mm -hmm. people are not fooled and they step back and say, hold on, hold on. I know she a woman. I know she's a woman of color. I know that Tim Walsh is relatable, but let's get to the policy. If we turn around and start having policy conversations, I think that a lot of people will start to, to, to flip because there are policies that have been instituted on the, on the Democratic side that people are feeling right now. And Trump also has policies that people don't want to feel. So, But we need to have a policy discussion so that we can hold them accountable. My problem with the people who support Kamala is that y'all not organizing to hold her accountable to anything. So when she becomes president and she didn't tell you anything, it's just like Brandon Johnson, the worst mayor <laughs> Chicago has ever had. You, <laughs> you, you got to be honest here. The reality is, is if they don't tell you how they're going to make your life better and you vote for them, then you have done an injustice to yourself. Because what mm -hmm. did Brandon Johnson tell you he was going to do? He told you he was going to uh, create a couple new taxes. And he was going to welcome migrants. He's he is is doing that. <laughs> but mm -hmm. what did he tell you about your community about you? Nothing. And that's why you're not getting anything. Kamala is not saying any, anything. We're not holding her accountable to anything. We can't say what well, Kamala said that she is going to erase all of student loan debt. Kamala said that she is going to increase the minimum wage. Kamala said that she is now for Medicare for all again, because, you know, she retracted last time she was running for president. What I are the policies? When... Yeah. What are the policies that she's committed to that we can hold her to? There are none. So when she wins, don't expect anything but symbolism. That's what we got with Obama. That's what we got with Lori, Brandon or anybody else. That's just a black face in these political uh, places that is saying, well, I was the first black or the first this to do something, but they don't do anything. I'm sick of it. I've I, I'm I'm in full agreement with you. I, what I what I find fascinating is that, you know, so many people look, I, I understand why people don't want to see Donald Trump get reelected. I get it. But when you do nothing but performative art, all what you're doing is laying the foundation for another more competent version of Donald Trump to come into it existence is. because yes. because you know yes. I, I i would say for for everyone that's watching you know you think people voted for donald trump not once but twice for the third time because their lives are great D donald trump right. is able to and again he's been in show business for a very long time yeah. so he knows how to manipulate the <laughs> media he knows how to play the game sure. and he's like hey you vote for me i'll make your life better and with this in Entire right. economic situation where you have inflation, where you have the city of Chicago just struggling every single day yep. to stay afloat, um, it is it is rather frightening. And what's going to happen now, especially between August nineteenth to the twenty second, will be the DNC convention. So, yep. what what are your plans, at least for? Uh, what, will you be participating? Will you be there nope. uh, at a rally or anything of that nature? What what are your thoughts on this convention that's coming here? I mean, do you think anything's going to be? accomplished with the Democrats being here in the city when they, I guess, crown nope. Kamala as the new nominee? I want to give the floor to you. I, I, I have been invited. I have been offered money. Um, I have Whoa. denied, denied, and denied. Okay? Yeah. I want nothing to do with the DNC. I have, I have a quick follow-up. All right. I have, and, and, I, and, <laughs> all right, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm stuck. I want you to continue on because I, I actually covered on the show how – Apparently, the Kamala Harris campaign is reaching out to celebrities and influencers to attend the event, paying twenty thousand. Did they offer any kind of monetary uh, situation at all to, to you, or or is that just? Is that for sure, different? for sure. They've oh, they've offered wow. some um, some business placements, um, you know, wow. uh, and at the end of the day, some contracts. But me, I was like, I'm not even entertaining it. It's like, can you think about it? And I got off the phone and never called them again. So, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I'm not interested in doing anything with the DNC. Um, and I didn't do anything with RNC. Um, I think that, um, you know, it's going to be a shit show <laughs> for real. And, and you know, you can still see the Palestinian movement form. You can still see many folks that are, are going to protest on um, 
uh, because of what's happening in their neighborhoods. Um, I'm, I am not looking to support any party that is not going to adopt an agenda that represents our interests. Matter of fact, that don't represent, that don't even adopt an agenda, period. We got to stop this symbolism stuff. You, we we got to understand that Donald Trump, we got to be honest here. Donald Trump was able to form because we had eight years of Obama and nothing formed. I mean, I'm just going to be honest here. I, I Some people ain't going to like that, but I'm going to be honest. Obama don't like me. I don't like him. Either. Anyway, that's a different story. But he inspired me very greatly because I won the oratory competition, first place in the city of Chicago with his speech when I was a young boy. Now, but we did not get the change and the hope that he promised. We didn't get that down here in the communities. We didn't see that in our neighborhoods. We say we saw the same abandoned buildings stay abandoned. We saw the same amount of violence either stay the same or get higher. We saw the same amount of poverty, the same amount of food deserts, the same amount of banks redlining our communities. I fought one many years after he was president. We saw the same realities that we saw in our communities eight years before Obama and eight years after. And that's how Trump was formed. That's why what you're saying is correct, kid. Now you elect someone with symbolism so we can say we had the first woman, the first woman of color president. But what does that get us? If she's president for eight years and then now Eric Trump movement and his other kids or, or, or his whoever is next after him get to come and say, look at what the Democrats didn't do for eight years. Don't y'all feel like they did y'all bogus again? Well, vote for us. And now we get another Trump presidency because they want to play on our emotions instead of give us real results. They must stop it because they are doing an injustice to the next generation, to our children. That's a fantastic note to really, I mean, again, it's hard to follow up with that when you're speaking the truth. And, you know, uh, my family, we've lived in this city for generations and uh, under the Democratic machine, folks, it's not a lot of fun because you see firsthand just how corrupt it is. No Fox News. Chicago is not a communist socialist utopia. It's a neoliberal nightmare in which people are being ground up and chewed up, which is why there is such a lack of voter engagement and why there's even a, a growing movement to recall Brandon Johnson of all people, because this election yep. cycle is, is just revealing just how Should much never been elected. I I'm in full agreement. That whole primary. In fact, I, <laughs> you know, speaks, you know, when, when you brought up Kamala Harris the first time for her policies, I actually, you, you, you might remember this, but, uh, it was in it was in 2019. It was on Martin Luther King Day when she made her announcement mm -hmm. that she was going to run for the 2020 election cycle. And uh, I was actually mm -hmm. covering one of the mayoral debates. I think you were there, too. I think it was at um, <laughs> um, yeah, Chicago University or uh, I, for, mm -hmm. I forget which campus it was at, but it was a uh, uh, yep. Lori Lightfoot was there and a few others. And this was uh, this was a, a major uh, town hall. But I just found it interesting that she chose that day of all days. And it's nothing but performative. Yep. And that's everything that could be described about Kamala yeah. and the Democrats. It's performative art. So that's it. Instead of focusing on fake stuff from the Democratic Party, I want to give you just a few moments for just a final question. Um, are there any events or rallies, real stuff in which people can be involved in that you're hosting, that you're doing? I know you've played a pivotal role in helping people attain home ownership, entrepreneurship opportunities. So is there anything up and coming uh, that you want to help promote or share about with our viewing audience? So that way, if they want to help or contribute or let some of their uh, friends or family members in Chicago, if they can you know, know about something, can can you just uh, invite us about at least something real that's happening instead of the fake politicians yeah. like we see for the Democrats? Yeah, for sure. I, you know, what I do is I keep doing the community work while they're playing the performative stuff and playing games. You know, the reason why I'm known throughout the, the neighborhoods that are most impoverished is because I've been in these neighborhoods working all of these years. They've never seen another politician. And I'm not a politician. I don't like saying I'm a politician, but they've never seen a politician that have come into their neighborhoods, right? They don't see politicians come and do anything in their neighborhood. So people stay in poverty. People are, are on drugs. People are selling drugs. People are carjacking. People can barely make ends meet. Children can barely have groceries. You know, like, 
real life issues each and every day that I deal with with our communities. And uh, the reality is, is these politicians are just playing politics and they're not actually doing anything about it. And so that's why people don't vote. That's why we had one of the lowest voter turnouts in the last election. If people right. actually voted last election, I would have won in a landslide. Right. <laughs> but you have so such a huge group of pe- the majority of people, vast majority of people in Chicago don't believe in politics. And they look at me and, J- to, and say, Jamal, that's rigged. Jamal, they just going to rig it against you. Jamal, I don't believe in that. Or they too hungry or uh, barely uh, can make a couple of dollars that when election day comes, they don't even they don't even remember it's election day. Right. Mm-hmm. And so you have people in survival mode and poverty that do, don't even think about voting because they can't even think about how they're going to eat. And so when you have people in these neighborhoods trying to run for office that trying to make the change, they can't get the necessary support because those people that are disenfranchised don't believe in the system or they're so much in survival mode that it prevents them from actually exercising their duty, which is what happened in last election. So that's why the very small mi- mi- minority, what, mm-hmm. not even 30 percent of people get to decide who's going to be mayor. That's right. While, seven, while 70 percent sits down and, and, and majority of those people are in poverty and in survival mode and don't believe that the system works for them. And so it's very hard, right? So um, uh, what I'm doing, I, I got some stuff coming up. I got a, August 28th, I'm doing at Malcolm X College, I'm doing a big um, housing expo slash back to school giveaway. We, we're going to be doing a big back to school giveaway, giving away TVs and, and shoes and back to school supplies, um, as well as making sure that every parent is on a pathway to ownership and getting in credit repair. We got a credit repair program or getting mm-hmm. their taxes done. They need their taxes done, um, uh, job job resources. So supporting them in every way so that they can better their lives. And then I'm supporting the children while they're they're beginning school as well. That's a week of, of um, uh, when school starts. So um, that's what we're doing August 28th at Malcolm X College. Um, and, and we're constantly just, just making sure that um, folks are being heard and their issues are being heard and, and met, um, even though they don't have politicians um, they're gonna, that are going to meet them. They got regular people who give a damn. Mm-hmm. That's a fantastic note. All right. Well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, unfortunately, we will be covering the DNC convention. Hopefully, we can, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to at least... Um, <laughs> May, may, maybe may, maybe get some groundbreaking interviews and who knows if we can actually get inside the DNC convention. I mean, that's up in the air, but <laughs> sure. uh, we'll, we'll, we'll let everybody know what's going on with that. Again, Jamal, thank you so much yeah. for taking time out of your day thank for you. being on our show. And as always, you won the dauntless few speaking truth to power. And we're glad to have you on as a guest. So uh, until then folks, you, uh, if you want to follow Jamal green, when I clip this interview, you'll follow all the social media links. They'll be pinned in the comment section as they should be. And uh, keep on doing the great work, and we'll continue on with the rest of our main show. Thank you so much for your time, Jamal. Thank you so much. Have a good one. I'd like to take my whole discography, cram it in your generator, dial it to Zionist. I'd make my very own antichrist, Jesse Jet, but fascified and settle things with violins. In half a line, I'm dialed in, leave him no identity to shield behind or hide within. I'd like to pull out all his talking points, disconnect his socket joints, cue the tiny violins. Posthumous synthetic beetles, USA by proxy. Toxins in your water, tiny plastic in your offspring. Plastic in the groundwater, plastic in the clouds. Oxy's in the reservoir, we tried to flush them out, but we didn't move them very far, just out into the river, where the critters didn't want it, but we nonetheless delivered. 
Impact isn't something we historically consider till our waterways are fatted and our crops are dry and bitter. We won't connect the dots before the heavy cost to enter, before the DNC would see us vote for lesser Hitler. America by proxy, propaganda for beginners. It's Jimmy Kimmel interviewing chatbot Heinrich Himmler. As those who march for peace are being gassed by the police, a separate, safer crowd demands the bombing never cease. Till all that's left of Gaza are its ashes on the breeze, only then can the oppressor soundly sleep. America by proxy, 2023. It's the AI rendered Beatles John and George were forced to be. It's AI rendered Edith PF singing on your screen as the wishes of the dead are dipped in piss behind the scenes. And that's what gives that hideous, uncanny valley sheen, that plastic sort of lifelessness that's seeping out the seams. The hologram of Freddy they tried passing off as queen will tell you death does not release you from contractual routine, won't free you from the leeches that already drank you clean. The suited, smirking parasites were not so quick to flee. Your body won't be cold, but they'll be plugging tours and teas. They plotted out your comeback, you just won't be there to see. America by proxy, a giant failing mall, a year at most from shutting down and leveling it all. And once it's been demolished, I'll come leave a ring of salt and pay respect to John and George. I know it's not their fault. I'd like to take my whole discography, cram it in your generator, dial it to Zionist. I'd Make my very own antichrist, Jesse Jack, but fascified and settle things with violin. In. Half a line I'm dialed in Leave him no identity To shield behind or hide within I'd like to pull out all his talking points Disconnect his socket joints Cue the tiny violins 